Mikhail Zagar is a Russian journalist, writer, and filmmaker. He's also the founding editor-in-chief of Russia's only independent TV news channel. In 2014, he was the recipient of the International Press Freedom Award. Among his books are All the Kremlin's Men and The Empire Must Die. He joins us today to help us understand President Vladimir Putin. Welcome, Mikhail. Thanks for joining us. Hello. That's a big task, understanding thank Putin. You, thank right? you for having me here. You spent uh, a long time trying to understand Putin and the Russian power structure from the inside. You've heard the discussion in the West and elsewhere, uh, trying to understand those same things. I'm curious, what do you think that the rest of the world gets right and wrong about Putin? Oh, you know, I think during the last years, uh, the rest of the world is, uh, is discussing uh, President Putin so Mm, so tensely that that uh, his image became much more like Hollywood style, uh, larger than life. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it's 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 really a simplification. Uh, I think he he's uh, in a way idealized by by global media, mm -hmm. or in a way demonized. But that's actually the same thing because he is being portrayed as the master of puppets of uh, as a man with a strategy a man who tries to control uh, if not the world but uh, and uh, who can control a lot of thing, uh, things who can control uh, uh, the whole Russia and and uh, he's got uh, he's like a chess player who can uh, achieve his goals. And I think that is very wrong perception of, of Vladimir Putin. He is not a strategic player, he's a tactician. He doesn't have a plan, but he's very swift and he, he's very quick in reacting. Uh, he can't afford uh, uh, taking any, qu um, any kind of quick decisions, like quick, quick re responses, but uh, he changes his, uh, his plans very um, rapidly and uh, frequently. Uh, and he, he's not he's not a strong leader in terms of um, as we usually understand uh, strong leaders. Uh, at, at least I, I think that that uh, clear vision, uh, clear agenda. Historically, at the same time, uh, vision is mm -hmm. very important for for a strong leader, like like Charles de Gaulle withdrawing Fr French troops from mm. from Algeria or uh, Anwar Sadat signing peace treaty with Israel. Um, Abra you're, you're describing a willingness Ab to take chances. Ab Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln well. yeah, uh, willingness to to share your vision and probably to persuade the popu uh, your population, your people, that that your vision is right. Uh, President Putin doesn't love painful decisions. He doesn't lo uh, like painful reforms. He doesn't want to be unpopular, and he doesn't want to take unpopular decisions. He uh, he always he's always trying to be. Uh, to be popular, and he is very like uh, there is mutual dependence, but he is very dependent on Russian bureaucracy. He is he is the son of that bureaucratic system, and he knows that he's uh, he should be connected with them. A lot of what you said about Vladimir Putin, people in the United States have said or, or might say about President Trump, that no clear plan going from his gush. Uh, desire to be popular, loves the, the crowd. Uh, have, you, have you thought about the two men and are there similarities that you see? Uh, you know, there are a lot of similarities and probably that from the beginning, that was the major uh, factor for, for Vladimir Putin to uh, kind of like Trump. Even before Trump was elected, uh, there were a lot of speculations that, that and not, not, not even speculations, uh, uh, many people in Kremlin uh, were uh, talking about that, that uh, that Putin would prefer uh, Trump to be elected at, as a president because they share the same approach, uh, very cynical, very pragmatic, not, not because of real connections, but because uh, uh, Donald Trump was perceived as a, as Putin's kind of guy. Uh, somebody like Silvio Berlusconi or, or Gerhard Schroeder, a uh, politician without uh, clear values he would fight for. Uh, but with uh, with very um, much, much more cynical approach, and mm -hmm. uh, that's probably very important uh, similarity. The deal maker versus the ideologue. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. the, so, uh, can we really talk about the Russian system of government separate from Vladimir Putin, or has this become more of a personal thing? Um, unfortunately, I would say that uh, uh, in today's Russia, Vladimir Putin is the the only important pillar of, of Russian state and that that Putin's stability is the major factor of Russian instability mm -hmm. because, because every time uh, 
I happen to ask my my sources, my counterparts, uh, uh, Russian bureaucrats or Russian oligarchs or Russian businessmen, uh, whatever. Uh, if I ask what's going to happen after Putin, they always say that's such a scary question. We prefer not to think about that. Uh, because we know that there are no mechanisms, uh, there are n uh, no institutions that could um, help our country to have any kind of transformation, any kind of transition of power. He is very uh, focused on his on himself and on his personal role, on his historical role, and that that uh, that has become a, power, uh, a factor of instability. Uh, none of us stay young forever. Do you see any possibilities that Putin at some point will be thinking in terms of secession? Will he try to anoint an heir apparent? Uh, you know, I, I cannot... I can, or does he just want to be president I cannot for cannot predict his future, probably. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, the time will come and he will start thinking of, uh, of some perspective. But as we see now, uh, he... He's not about that. He's not thinking about uh, about some some future leaders to come, future gen generations to govern. Uh, he thinks that he is the most ex experienced and the most effective. He thinks that he is the one and only, and he is. Uh, that's his mission to save the country, and uh, he can do that better th than anyone else. And he sincerely thinks that that he should stay, and that's that's the better way. Uh, uh, for the country, not n not for for himself, and he was actually disillusioned with uh, with the previous um, experience of choosing the successor. He was not happy with Dmitry Medvedev as as Russian president, and um, I I have doubts that that he w he's pl at, at least for now he's not planning to uh, to make the same mistake again. Is there anyone that you can identify in the power structure who has that type of potential, who might have either the ambition or the charisma to be somewhere down the line uh, a successor? Um, definitely not, no, because uh, for, for first, for Putin, it's always very important uh, to make surprises. Mm -hmm. so, so if he ever uh, picks um, anybody like a new successor, He's going to pick from uh, to pick from the crowd of rather faceless bureaucrats, and now we have that that new generation of uh, um, of new new wave of uh, of bureaucrats in their forties. They they are not his old pals, but much more. Uh, uh, they, they 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 could be sons of his uh, old old friends. Uh, that new generation is being appointed to important key positions, like his chief chief of staff. Uh, and Anton Vaino, uh, who used to be chief of protocol for him during the, the, the previous decade, or, uh, for example, his bodyguard was uh, appointed, was elected actually, first appointed, then elected mm -hmm. um, as a governor of um, one central region in Russia. So a lot of those faceless, younger uh, bu bureaucrats are the people to watch. And it might be at this point, uh, it's their best interest to keep their heads down and not make yeah. too much about it, yes. their ambition. Yes. Their ambition. What, uh, should we have any expectations for the March election? Um, yeah, no, all Russian bureaucracy is waiting for, for that uh, day as very important day because uh, all everything important is going to happen right after. The, the election day, no one is interested and no, no one is worried uh, with the uh, outcome of the election. But everybody is waiting for what's going to happen next because the, uh, since uh, March 19th, technically, that's going to be his last presidential term. Uh, according to the Russian constitution, he cannot be re-elected once again. So uh, from the f from the start, from March 19th, he sh uh, he should start preparing uh, the system for. Um, for some kind of not transition, but uh, some 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 uh, series of reshuffles inside the government, inside of uh, inside the ad administration, to make sure he stays in power. Probably he's going to to change the constitution, and he is he's just he has to start planning. He has to start thinking of uh, of new schemes. He has to to change people so so everyone is is trembling expecting for 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 six years of turbulence and uh, you, you say he has no clear vision but he's certainly been active on the international stage what should we expect in that regard I mean it's called Russian meddling here and some say that's just too mild of a term and essentially it's cyber warfare uh, now we've seen the poisoning of the ex-spy in the UK 
that, that uh, Theresa May has said is definitely involved. The Russians are involved, even though they're denials. What, what should we expect? And, and the recent uh, moves in Ukraine over the last several years. Will Putin continue to shake things up, so to speak? You know, um, actually, I'm not an expert in uh, like in in uh, in poisons, and I I do not the the final uh, d details and the right, and I'm not assuming. Of, yeah, yeah. There's but, an investigation. But generally, but, but uh, generally, uh, he's still he's still there. He's uh, he's very uh, assertive uh, in the same message. He used to uh, he used to um, um, uh, to express publicly back in. Uh, 2007, during his famous or infamous Munich speech on uh, uh, during Munich um, uh, con conference on security, uh, when he when he m announced that he wants to have the new uh, geopolitical world order, the new geopolitical system, well, security system, he he named it Yalta Number Two. Mm -hmm. He wants some kind of new Yalta conference with uh, American leader, European leader, probably Chinese uh, chairman and Russian president to, to set up the new rules of the game. To probably, definitely, to, uh, to make clear that there are certain boundaries and there are certain zones of influence. He wants to be, uh, to be treated as, as the man who can discuss those issues. He wants, uh, uh, he wants Western uh, leaders to stop pretending that there are human rights or values and, that, uh, and uh, zones of influence do not exist in, uh, uh, in 23rd century. He thinks that zones of influence still exist. Uh, if not, why uh, Western countries need NATO? So he, he, wants, um, he wants, in a way, uh, the returning of Cold War rhetorics because he he enjoys that he 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 thinks that, that that's the it empowers him that's the only possibility to feel respected mm -hmm. uh, the last time uh, Russian leader was was sure that, that that he he runs the world or at least he's treated as if he run the world was Lenin Brezhnev so so he has to um, to come back to, uh, to that period. It's amazing whether we're talking about minor powers or major powers, it often comes down to a sense of respect <laughs> or, or honor. The, uh, a final thought, if you were giving advice to whether it's the US or the UK or any country Not in the world, me. of how best, <laughs> <laughs> how best to deal with Vladimir Putin, wh what do you think is the best strategy? Oh, you know, I've, mm, I won't give you that advice, but I think that that's very important. Uh, that's very important to remember that Russia is not Vladimir Putin. That Vladimir Putin, is, even if he is Russian leader and Russian president, he is not all the country. And we really don't know the statistics. We really don't know um, how many Russians really support him mm -hmm. or how many Russians uh, feel that they are not against him because there are there are no other politicians in the country. Unfortunately, we don't have real political system and we don't have uh, independent politicians because that's the most dangerous profession in the country. So, so we we see no competitors for him. But that's very important for 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 the West that 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 Russian people are not Vladimir Putin and uh, uh, Russian civil society exists. Russia is not is not the country that worships uh, President Putin. Mm -hmm. uh, Russia is much more free country in a way. Uh, so far, we have free internet and we have free media. Uh, Russian um, Russian society is very active, and uh, that's very important. I, I think the worst scenario for Russian civil society is the new Cold War. Probably uh, the hawks in. Uh, in Kremlin and probably Vladimir Putin and probably many politicians uh, uh, outside of Russia would benefit from from new Cold War because that's 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 uh, that's a good thing for uh, for um, uh, for geopolitical games but that's the worst thing for Russian civil society because they are they are um, they are in a way pro-democracy force they are very pro-western force and and they are uh, they are going to be left alone uh, if 
real uh, iron curtain is re-erected. Well, uh, earlier you talked about a sort of a Hollywood construct. Thank you for sharing with us a more three-dimensional view of both Putin and Russia. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it.